Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online, meeting every Saturday, 1215 p.m. Pacific. Now, this word is going to start out with a lot of scripture. So what I want you to do is sit back and listen because God is dealing now and challenging those of you who are called to his service. And some of you may not be up to the challenge because there is a term called, you must pay the cost to be the boss. And there are times when Jesus lets us know there is a cost to taking up our cross and following him. But as we take up our cross, we also must be willing to be shaped, pruned, cleansed, purified. Mm in order to be ready to serve him when he calls us to the front lines. Listen to this word. It will challenge you to decide whether you're in or out. Okay. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And I will make Void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hands of them that seek their lives. And their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and a hissing, and every one that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plague thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friends in the siege and straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that shall seek their lives shall straighten them. Thou shalt, then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee, and shall say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city, and one as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet, till there be no place to bury. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make the city of Tophet, and the houses of Jerusalem and the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the house upon whose roof they have burned incense unto all the hosts of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods, then came Jeremiah from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my word. All right. Thank you very much. Now I want to repeat verse 13, half of it. The reason he's doing all this is because all the houses of the roofs, they burned incense unto all the hosts of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Now, this is the whole reason that God's going to come down. And he had Jeremiah prophesy. And now Jeremiah prophesies. Now, this is what I want you to hear. Father, I pray for your heavy anointing on this message in the name of jesus i pray we're in the last days our particular group is here for a reason we're not exactly sure everything that god's going to do with our group but the more i the more we go into this the more i am seeing what god is doing in our lives even why some of you have struggled in the areas you've struggled in, not quoting anybody's business at all. But to say this, some of you have gone through some of the ugly experiences, some of the shameful experiences, and some of the fearful experiences because that is the very area God is going to use you in a level of authority because you have to experience being under the thumb of Satan 
and then having Satan under your foot to be able to speak with authority what God tells you to speak in the other people's lives because you will not only be speaking by faith, but through experience. And you will know what it's like. You will be able to say, I know what it's like to be under the thumb of Satan, but now I know what it's like for Satan to be under my foot because God has given me the victory and he can do it for you. And when you say it, you won't be hoping it, you'll know it because you're speaking from a point of authority, from a knowing experience. Now, what I wanna say to you about this is there, there are times in our lives that God uses experiences that we've had where we have stumbled into a trap of Satan. There are experiences where we have been duped by Satan. There are other times in our lives where we have been abused and molested by Satan. There are other times where we have been done wrong by Satan. No matter what it is, whether it's through people of our own family, whether it's on the job, whether we've been lied on and falsely accused, whether we have been fired, whether we have been uh, oh my goodness, no matter, you know, going through fiery trials, the fiery furnace, having our, our flesh scraped off of us bit by bit as God is cleaning us up, preparing us to be a, a vessel of honor. Whatever the case may be, the experience is going to yield to the anointing of God when he's ready to thrust us forward and use us. And when we speak, we will speak out of love, but we will also speak boldly. We're going to go on to Jeremiah chapter 20. Now, Pasher, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah, the prophet, and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Now, let me stop right there. I am talking specifically to my church family right now. And in general, to those of you on YouTube who feel the call of God on your life. When you get your feelings hurt, when things come against you, when things get hard, when it seems like God is treating you unfair, when it seems like you have taken on the thing of hard knocks and you're wondering why is this your lot in life, when it seems like you're the first one fired and the last one hired, when it seems like you are becoming a victim for some odd reason, no fault of your own. It's just happening, these attacks from people, these attacks from the demonic. You're wondering, what is, what is all this about, Alfie? When you're being attacked in your mind and your emotions, the first battle the Lord has to teach you to fight is the, the personal battle of your own life. Some of you will have to learn to battle demons. Now, in our church family, some of you are battling demons. Some of you are doing spiritual warfare. Some of you are praying like crazy. Some of you are fighting for holiness. You're doing everything you can to live a holy life. Some of you are self-reassessing, checking yourself out, going down your checklist, making sure that you are lining up with God's ways and God's word. You're lining up with the ways of Jesus Christ. You're lining up with the scriptures. You're lining mm. up with holiness. You're being obedient to the leading and the nudging of the Holy Spirit. In spite of all that, life happens. And life is part of your boot camp. Life is part of your training, the making of you. And what's happening is God is raising you up as leaders, raising every single one of you up 
everyone that's in our church family, God's Church of Love, right here on this conference and video call. God is raising you up as leaders, but the first thing you must learn to battle is you. The second thing you must learn to battle is the devil. Those are your two main battles. And then you will battle to take your land back because God is telling you to go in and possess your land. While you're possessing your land, you're possessing you. You're clearing the land. You're clearing it out. You're cleansing your body. You're purifying yourself. You're consecrating yourself. Then you are to drive out the enemy. After you clear, As you clear the land, you drive out the enemy. So now you're doing battle with the devil. You're doing battle with your flesh. You're doing battle with sin. You're doing battle with the works of darkness. You're doing battle. And this is where you're supposed to be because everything you're doing right now, right now, and some of you are in the classroom, you're learning, you're reading, you're at the foot of Jesus and he is teaching you one-on-one, -on -one, downloading revelation, downloading insights, all kind of stuff is going on right now. Everything you're doing right now is you're being equipped from being, from going through boot camp through training, through uh, learning weapons of warfare, learning war strategies, learning different ways to do battle, all kinds of things you're learning now. This is because you have got to be ready for the times that Jeremiah went through when they put him in the stocks. He was, he was imprisoned for doing God's will. So God has to toughen you and me up for what's ahead. He will protect. Nobody could hurt Jeremiah. Jeremiah knew he was protected, but he was, he still had to pay penalties for serving God. So I admonish you who want to serve God, sit down with God, count the cost, and ask God to give you the cojones, ask God to give you the backbone, ask God to give you the courage to face what's in front of you and say, come what may, I will serve the Lord at all costs. At all costs may mean the life of your own children. At all costs may be your own life. At all costs may be everything being taken from you. At all costs may be you no longer have a home. At all costs could mean anything. Could mean jail time. You have no idea what all that encompasses. But whatever God has for you, he will not let you be hurt. But there are times that we do suffer loss for the sake of Christ. Are you willing to take up your whole cross, the whole cross, everything that comes with it, and follow Christ to your destiny? As Jeremiah was willing to serve God. But listen, this is where you have to be careful not to get caught up in the traps of Satan as he tries to attack your mind and emotions. And that's why our first battle is ourself. Once we conquer self, Satan can't trip us up as easily. Now, this is what happened to Jeremiah, and I want you to hear it. Verse 4. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends. They shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and then thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. He will carry them captive unto Babylon and shall stay them, shall slay them with the sword. 
Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city and all the labors thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Pasher, all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity. And thou shalt come to Babylon and there thou shalt die and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. Now, this is Jeremiah after putting out all this judgment call to people that God sent him to send these words to. Now, Jeremiah is discouraged. Listen to what he goes through. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Every one mocketh me. Now, this is his penalty. This is what he had to pay a price for serving God. Everybody mocks him. They jeer him. They punish him. They kick him to the curb. They reject him. They put him down. They make fun of him and his God. They belittle him. He's getting his feelings hurt. He's being insulted. He's being disrespected. He does not like it. He is not a happy camper. That's what we have to watch out for. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Now, because of God's word, now he's suffering all this at the people, their words, their actions toward him. It's all negative. Nobody likes Jeremiah right now. Then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Now, this is what we tend to go through. <laughs> when people hurt our feelings, don't we want to just say, well, forget y'all. You know, y'all can go jump in the lake. I'm done. You want to wipe the dust off your feet? Walk the, wipe the dirt off your hands and say, forget it. I'm done. I ain't doing this no more. Y'all ain't worth it. Y'all ain't worth me having my feelings hurt. Y'all ain't worth me going to jail. Y'all ain't worth it. Look how y'all treat me. Forget y'all. Right? That's the tendency, the human tendency. But when one conquers self, then one can get a new mind instantly like Jeremiah did. And what did Jeremiah say? But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with the forbearing and could not stay. Now, what that means for some who don't understand what that just said, the word of God, the gift of God, see the giftings and callings of God or without repentance. And even if you decide you don't want to serve God because the people ain't worth it because you don't like getting your feelings hurt. The word of God is like a burning fire. It's shut up in your bones. And after a while, it's, 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 it's like you just can't hold it. Like you've got to regurgitate it up. It's got to come up and out. It's got to. Well, he realized he had to serve the Lord whether he liked it or not. Mm, 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 mm. And no matter what, he had to stay the course. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting. In other words, he's got a, 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 a whole bunch of people watching him now. They're, they're waiting to see him mess up. They're waiting to see him falter. They're waiting to see him fail. And oh man, they're just, they're just drooling, waiting to see his demise and, and everything in his life. So that's not a good feeling when everybody's pulling against you because you served the Lord and spoke God's word against them. Now, all right. 
Oh, boy, I hope you guys are getting this. I'm trying to make it plain. Okay. Uh, hmm. Now, all my familiars watched for my halting, saying, peradventure, that means maybe this could actually happen. He will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. And you guys must remember that. God is with you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Right. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But O Lord of hosts that trieth the righteous and seeth the reins in the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of the evil doer. Wow, now I'm going to stop right there because he's going back and forth. He's, he's having a battle with himself. He's going in and out, praise God, and then woe is me. Praise God, and then woe is me. I don't want to serve God anymore. I don't want to serve, I don't want to talk to these people. I must, his fire is shut up in my bones. I must serve him. So he's going through a battle. Now, I'm not going through the whole chapter, but what I want to say to you is before God really puts you out there, this is your time to equip and build up supernatural spiritual muscle. Because as long as you build up muscle, God will use you. Now, there will be two things that will happen to you. And this came to me last night. You know how when you walk barefooted a lot, you start to build up calluses on your feet? Well, what happens when you're in sin, you tend to build up calluses in your heart. Your heart becomes one big callous. That's why the Bible says, because sin will abound, the love of many will wax cold. I'm making a point, so I'm not getting sidetracked. I'm making a point. So when you are calloused, you don't feel as much. You don't care as much. You don't love. You don't, It's all about me. Okay, you're all about protection, protecting yourself. You're all about guarding yourself. You're not going to let them do you dirt. You're not going to take no mess, Jack. Right. So you go through that and you got your dukes up and everything ready for the next sucker that thinks they're going to come against you. But here's what happens in God. When you're in Christ and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's filled you with the new nature and the godly love. Now you're operating from a new standpoint of love. You're operating from agape love rather than phileo or eros. Now you're in godly love, which is unconditional love, which means you have the capacity to love your enemies as well as your friends. Now, that callous I talked about that you built up, will now begin to be melted away over time. And the way God melts the callous away is through the love of God. Now, imagine a foot with no callous at all. You ever have go to a, a man of pedicures and have your callous removed from your feet? You notice how tender and sensitive your feet are? Like, woo, woo, you can't hardly hit anything that's not normal because it'll be like, ooh, boy, that hurt. So, the, the, but the difference with God is while God's removing your callus on one hand, he's toughening you up in the spirit realm on the other. And as he's doing inner healing in you, because that's part of the process, inner healing, as long as you include it by asking God to do this. You must ask. You have not, because you ask not. Many of y'all need to be asking God for inner healing. See, y'all don't have to go through life like you've been going through. Sensitive, tender, flinchy, 
touchy. What you mean by that? Paranoid. No. You want God to toughen you up. So give you inner healing. As he's removing the callus, he's also placing a toughness in you in the spirit as you seek him for inner healing. There's a strength that comes, an inner strength. You're becoming stronger on the inner man. And as you get stronger, you also, this is the paradox of God, uh, you also become more tender. And as you become more tender and more loving, more sensitive to other people's feelings, your own sensitivity, oversensitivities tend to wane. They tend to diminish. And you're not so easily hurt. You're not so easily offended. Now, the reason for this process is not only for you to live your abundant life and be happy and be fulfilled and all of that, but no, there comes a point of purpose. And when purpose meets destiny, you must be at a point and be developed by then where you are not oversensitive, you are not easily angered, you don't have a short fuse, you're not paranoid, you're not fearful, you are willing at that point to go through what you must go through. You are willing to be mistreated on your job and take it on the chin without retaliating. You take it on the chin and then you turn around and you take it to God and give it to him and ask him, okay, Lord, uh, help me. I, I, you know, please help me, Lord. I really need your help. And you ask God to heal the hurt that just happened the unwarranted hurt because you didn't do anything to deserve this hurt but this is how you battle the devil he wants to make you say you know what all this ain't worth it i'm not going through all this i'm tired of having my feelings hurt let me promise you guys your feelings will be hurt and the reason for that is because satan wants to use people to discourage you from serving god but you are called you have a high calling on your life. One of the ways that God toughened me up was by allowing me to get my feelings hurt. Now, nobody could hurt me physically. Oh, but they could hurt me emotionally. Oh, my goodness. I felt like a, a dartboard. And some of the worst hurts came from folks right in the church right in the church but what did i have to do and sometimes we say this why do i have to be the one that's always doing the forgiving why do i always have to be the one that has to go through this and go through that and take it on the chin and keep my mouth shut why do i have to be silent while they attack me why do I have to always be the one to rise above? Why do I always have to be the one to do it God's way while they do it their way? Why do I always have to be? It feels very, very unfair. But, but, the reason you have to be the one is because of God's high calling on your life. You cannot fulfill that calling in the power that God needs you to operate in if you cannot conquer yourself. You cannot conquer them, but you can conquer yourself as they try to conquer you and you feel like you're losing most of the battles against them. You feel like the dart board of society, the dart board of everybody's, the the focal point of everybody's anger, the focal point of everybody's ridicule, the focal point of everybody's mocking, making fun of you, talking about you behind your back, backstabbing you. And you're taking it. And you, you're the one that's doing the forgiving. You're the one that's doing the apologizing. You're the one that's doing whatever you must do in spite of how you feel. You're the one that has to rise above every time. But it's not your fault. You're in the right, they're in the wrong. But anyway, it doesn't matter. You end up being the one that always has to make the adjustments. 
That's because of the call on your life. Now, I am not just talking from the Bible. I am telling you from experience. I know what it feels like to always have to be the one. Walk into a salon and everybody is on me like white on rice. And I have to go in the bathroom, cry it out and ask God, Lord, take the hurt out and help me forgive them and help me get out here and serve my, my, my clients with a smile and a good attitude and peace in my heart and not hold any grudges. I had no idea God was using all of that because of the call he had on my life. I could not afford my flesh. I could not afford to yield to my desire to retaliate. I couldn't afford to cuss anybody out. I couldn't afford to blurt out cuss words and frustration. I couldn't afford to have a fit in front of everybody. I represented God. I was not my own. I'm bought with a price and I must represent God at all times, even when being mistreated. You want an anointing on your life. You gotta pay the cost to be the boss, baby. And yes, you will be hurt. And yes, you will be done dirt and you will lose things and you will lose jobs and you will be done wrong and you'll be lied on and you'll be accused falsely. Can you take it? If you can take it, baby, you can make it. Can you take it? Can you look back at everybody in your past and say, I have no issues with any of them? If you met them at the store, would you be able to smile? Or would you end up with a knot in your gut and a, and a lump in your throat? What would happen? Because if you have no negative reaction, if there's no aversion going on, then you're perfectly in the clear. If there's any hint of a ripple, ask God to remove every crumb of resentment. Ask God to remove every crumb of hurt. Because you don't need dead weight on you when you're marching to the, to, to the battle, when you're marching to the front lines. You don't need anything dragging on you from your personal life. You need to be focused on the battle, not on your emotional scars. If you're driving a car and you're looking in the rearview mirror the whole time and you're focused on what's back there, you're going to crash into something that's in front of you. So you must be focused. If you're in battle, you don't even need a rear view mirror, baby. If you're going to the front lines, throw the rear view mirror in God's hands. Throw it away. Let him have it. You don't need that anymore. But if it keeps coming up, if Satan keeps bringing it up, if your emotions and memories keep bringing it up, before you go to battle, you better sit down and deal with you. Deal with you first. You are the first battle you must win. And that's why God takes us through these seasons of inner healing, renewal, deliverance. Oh, we must go through all of that because we cannot afford to drag the kitchen sink with us when we're going off to battle the enemy in the front lines. All those dirty dishes in that kitchen sink, you don't need any of that dragging on your body. You got to carry all your, your ammunition. You've got to have all that on you. You don't need all that old stuff. So you have to remember when you are about to be used by God, whether it's in the prophetic realm, whether it's preaching, whether it's uh, singing and worship, whether it's in the dance and praise, whether it's in teaching, whether it's in counseling, whether it's in exhortation, whether it's word of knowledge, words of wisdom, whatever the case may be, whether it's in tongues, interpretations of tongues, no matter what, whether it's in working of miracles, whether it's in physical healing or inner healing or all the gifts of healings, all the gifts of healing, many of them. 
You have to be willing to pay the cost to be the boss. You have to be willing to sit down and count the cost. God told the Israelites when they were going into battle, when he first started getting them to go to get ready to go into battle, I think it was with Gideon. The first thing he told the people was tell those that are afraid to go home. He didn't hold it against them. He said, go home. Because that meant they're not ready for war. So if you still have a lot of fear, stay home, stay in God's face, get him to work on you, and you conquer that fear, you and God, because only God can do it. You and God conquer that fear until all of that is, is, is a thing of the past, buried in God in the sea of forgetfulness. When there's a call on your life, you have to remember, deal with yourself, number one. Deal with the enemy, number two. And the enemy is your private enemies, not out there at war, your private enemies. And you do your personal spiritual warfare before you try to go out and do battle for the Lord. Amen? I hope that makes sense. But we're all in preparation. And God's going to use each one of us mightily, depending on how we avail ourselves to ready, to make ready, make ourselves ready for what he has for us. God bless you. Wow. Powerful, awesome. That was a great message. Mm, thank God.